We're continuing our study of Ephesians today on the truth and love. So have your Bible open to chapter 3, and let's study together. There's a message true and glad for the sinful and the sad. Ring it out, ring it out, ring it out. It will give them courage new, it will help them to be true. Ring it out, ring it out, ring it out, ring it out. Ring out, Barely ring the word, speed it away, Lord man, yes, it's divine, and see, send it today, still far Let from Jesus, many live in sin, Thank you for joining us today on The Truth in Love. As I mentioned a moment ago, we are continuing our study in the book of Ephesians, and we are in chapter 3 today, and we'll be looking at verses 14 through 21. You know, power is a fascinating thing, and sometimes it can be a little scary. We uh, are oftentimes uh, able to admire a physical power, physical strength, and uh, uh, we can be intrigued by magnetic power. Uh, there are uh, elements of, of the power of nature uh, that are all inspiring You think about earthquakes and uh, the power of the oceans and things like that. Uh, the power of the Saturn V rocket just absolutely amazes me every time I, I hear it described. Uh, political power is something that uh, is very strong at times and, uh, and scary at times, as well as military power. There are all kinds of, of power that we uh, encounter in our lives from day to day. Well, in our text for today, in Ephesians 3, the Apostle Paul references power that uh, the Christian has, power that's available to children of God. It's spiritual power. For the first two and a half chapters in Ephesians, Paul has uh, spoken about uh, the blessings that uh, are uh, ours in Christ. If you are a member of the body of Christ, uh, then you have great blessings, great wealth, great riches at your disposal. And uh, Paul has been referencing those. And one of the, the, the blessings that we have as Christians relates to uh, the power that's at work for us. And uh, Paul has mentioned that uh, already back in chapter 1, and we'll call our attention back to that in just a moment. But um, in this section, Paul really wants for uh, his readers to appreciate uh, and access those blessings that are ours. And uh, in order to show them how much he desires that for them, he allows Christians to have a glimpse into a very personal part of his heart. Uh, they are allowed a glimpse into his prayers in which he expresses uh, his praise to God and his request uh, for strength uh, on behalf of the Ephesian Christians and by implication us. And so let's study today from Ephesians chapter 3 and let's first of all uh, look at verses 14 and 15. For this reason I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ from whom the whole family in heaven and on earth is named. Here Paul begins uh, this uh, prayer that he's expressing on behalf of the Ephesians. Now remember when Paul began chapter 1, it seems as though he was wanting to get into uh, the contents of that prayer then because he begins verse 1 the same way he began verse 14, for this reason. Uh, and uh, we remember when we studied the first few verses of chapter 3, it looks as though Paul kind of takes a side step from his original intent and deals with the matter of God's mystery and how he was the apostle for the Gentiles and uh, that his imprisonment was something that they shouldn't be overly concerned about because it was all a part of the plan that he was uh, fulfilling. Well, now he gets back to what it looks like he was trying to do in the first uh, few verses of chapter 1, and he gets into this prayer uh, for the Ephesians. And so he says, for this reason, which draws our attention back to what he said previously, uh, when he spoke about the blessings that are ours in Christ uh, and the blessings of salvation and, and spiritual uh, things and uh, all of that, he says, for this reason, because of all of that, he says, I bow my knees to the Father. Well, this is just one 
uh, prayer posture that we read about in Scripture. You know, there's not really one single posture in prayer that's acceptable. There are a number of them that are mentioned favorably in the Bible. Uh, there's mention of uh, people standing while they pray. Uh, there's uh, mention of sitting. Uh, there's mention of, of course, being on one's knees. Uh, even Jesus um, lay prone on the ground in the Garden of Gethsemane when he prayed, falling on his face, the text says. So there are a number of postures of prayer and Paul mentions here that he bows down on his knees to the Father. What a great thing to contemplate uh, regarding the uh, object of our prayers or the, uh, the one to whom we pray. Uh, isn't it wonderful to think about the fact that we can call God Father, that he wants us to call him Father. John wrote, Behold what manner of love the Heavenly Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the children of God. We are God's children. He is our Father. And uh, just like a loving father uh, in the earthly realm uh, is uh, delighted when his children come uh, to talk to him and spend time with him, no doubt our Heavenly Father is the same way. He desires that we pray to him. Men ought always to pray and never to faint. Luke 18 verse 1, God wants us to pray and so Paul takes advantage of that opportunity and that privilege and he says, I bow my knees to the Father. We have access to the throne of grace. Hebrews 4.16 says that we, because of Christ, can come boldly to the throne of grace. That we might find grace and mercy to help in every time of need. You see, God allows us access into his throne room through the process of prayer. And we ought to take advantage of uh, those opportunities to pray. And so that's what Paul does as he begins this uh, section. He, he prays to the Father, the one who is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think. He'll say later in chapter 3, verse 20. And because of all of the blessings that are theirs, he bows before the Father in prayer. And then he gets to the content of his prayer. What is it exactly that he prays for? Well, let's look at the request that... Um, uh, that Paul makes in chapter 3. Let's look at verses 16 through 19. Ephesians 3, beginning in 16. He says, uh, he prays that he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width and length and depth and height, to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Well, before we look specifically at what he says in uh, this request uh, part of his prayer, let's uh, first of all make sure we uh, recognize and appreciate uh, the power of prayer. In uh, James chapter 4, verse 2, James said to those uh, readers of his, you have not because you ask not. He would say later in chapter 5, verse 16, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. So there is power in prayer and uh, James was trying to get across to his readers that, uh, that one of the reasons why they were not enjoying uh, certain blessings that they would like to enjoy was simply because they hadn't taken time to ask. Now, Please understand that doesn't mean that everything that you ask for you're going to get. Uh, he, doesn't, uh, he doesn't say that at all. He's simply saying that there are certain blessings that could be ours but may not be simply because we've not taken the time to request. Uh, so there is power in prayer and uh, God wants us uh, to pray and wants us to remember uh, that He's willing to, uh, uh, to give good gifts to His children to those who ask. Jesus spoke about that in Matthew chapter 7, verses 7 and following, when he said that we should ask and seek and knock. Uh, he that asks receives, he that seeks finds. To him that knocks it shall be open. And uh, many of us live beneath our privileges because we don't take the time that we should take to pray. But now let's look specifically at the request that Paul makes. The first thing that he says in verse